Here it is, middle of January, and 60 degrees outside. And I'm telling you, if you got beehives, the way this crazy winter has been this year is bad. I'm walking out to the apiary, so you're just going to have to kind of excuse my being unprepared for this video, like all videos. But I know they're flying because it's 60 degrees. So this is my bigger hive. And uh, bad thing about it is this time of year, so the bees, it's warm enough for them to fly, but there's nothing for them to forage. Um, and if bees are flying, bees are robbing. That's really kind of the big problem. I don't really see any signs of robbing over here. But um, I left literally all of the honey on this hive this year. So there's two deeps and a medium that were clear full of honey. And the reason why that I left the honey on there was for no reason other than, you know, after post-cancer it's just been taking me longer to get stuff done and I just simply I I didn't get it done now it won't hurt them to leave all that honey on there may actually be beneficial <laughs> uh, with these weather events like they have because we've really not had a whole lot of weather this winter that would cause the bees to hole up in there and go into like winter mode you know we've we've had almost every week of December Except for one week, which was the week of Christmas, like between Christmas and New Year's. we That's the only cold week we really had in December. And January's had some, like, a lot of days that were in the 40s and 50s and now almost 60. And it's, you know, I think January 16th or something like that. 17th. I don't even know what the date is. Um... But yeah, that's bad on the bees. They they are obviously leaving the hive to defecate. That's one thing they're going to do. They're going to leave the hive to see if that there's anything they can go, you know, forage. There's nothing. They they may try to find some water. Um, but mostly they're living off of their stores, and because they're flying, they're also using more energy. Um, which means that they're now going to have to consume more food. So, uh, you know, I don't really know the solution because this is really the first winter that I can recall that most of the time the weather has been <laughs> above 50 degrees and it's the middle of January. Um, I, I really don't know. Like, do you put, if you need it, do you put sugar water on? I really don't know. It would seem like to me that unless you really had a lot of stores, you, you probably should do something. I don't know. I would not want to break a hive open this time of year. So I, I really don't know. If if I was if I just had enough honey on the hives to just get the bees through winter, I don't know what I would do right now. It, it would be totally different. But because I know I had an abundance of honey on there, I'm I'm not that worried. But any other year, I'd, I I really don't know. Anybody have any ideas? Do you raise bees? Have you seen like where all winter long is? I actually do see uh, maybe some two bees fighting. Might be some robbing going on. But it's not a lot. So that that's kind of good. 
Um, I just really, like if you raise bees and you've had an unusually warm winter, what did you do? Did you put honey, did you put sugar water on your hives? Because I really don't know the answer. Maybe I should get a hold of like one of the, you know, there's a couple of big beekeepers that I watch that have, you know, hundreds of hives. Maybe I should ask them what they do. Um, I know people like down in Florida and Georgia and warmer states, you know, that the weather don't really get as cold as it does up in Kentucky. Their bees have got to have seasons, right? I mean, or do they just constantly fly and harvest and collect and I really don't know. I know up here normally by by mid-December it's already gotten cold enough where the bees start flying and you, generally the bees don't fly again until you know you might get that random warm day in like February or early March but you don't really see them flying until then. So now that they've not even probably gone a full week without a day they couldn't fly on. Uh, because even that uh, thir negative 35 degree weather we got the Friday before Christmas, even just a few days after Christmas, it was up in the 50s again. Crazy. I don't know. Anyways, that's what I kind of wanted to like talk about. If anybody's got any ideas, if you raise bees and you actually have valid data, not that you've read on the internet someone else said, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Just a uh, quick update. So when I said I didn't know what to do, there, you know, there's like three beekeeping channels that I watch on YouTube. Uh, I don't like go and watch them all the time. But, you know, if I do have a question, I can generally find it at one of those three channels. And that is Fred Dunn, uh, David Burns, and Cayman Reynolds. And uh, they, they are beekeepers with a lot more experience than I have. So, you know, if I need help, I go to those three channels. That's the only channels I go to. Um, but the second, the, the, not the current video, but the previous video that uh, David Burns did was exactly on this topic. And I'm going to link to his video in the comments of this of this video that I upload so that you can see what he says but basically what he is saying is to use a protein patty of some sort and maybe um, some sugar candy away from your hives where the bees can find it but you obviously don't want it on your hives or you don't want to break your hives open I knew that was kind of bad I would never break a hive open I think I mentioned that in the video I recorded and uh, that's pretty much what he said to do. So um, you need to do something, especially if your hives were, you know, just had enough. But if you had an excess like I do, you maybe don't have to worry about it too much. Anyways, I just wanted to add this to this video and thanks for watching.